Uh, hello and welcome to this video um, in which we'll be looking at photons. Uh, but before we do so, um, we're going to just recap a very small amount of GCSE physics, um, specifically the electromagnetic spectrum. Now, when you study GCSE physics and this particular topic, you will have learnt that the electromagnetic spectrum is simply a family of waves and it forms a continuous spectrum. Um, so we have one wave, but the characteristics of, of this wave change as we travel through the electromagnetic spectrum. At one end of the electromagnetic spectrum, we've got radio waves moving all the way through to the other end of the electromagnetic spectrum where we've got gamma rays. And each of these regions, so radio waves, microwaves, infrared and so on, all have a characteristic wavelength associated with them. So, and if you remember, um, the, the wavelength of a wave is simply the distance in metres from the, from the peak to the next peak of the wave, or alternatively from the trough to the next trough of the wave. So radio waves typically have a wavelength, so a distance from peak to peak, of around about 10 to the power 3 metres. Whereas as we move through the electromagnetic spectrum, up to gamma rays, then this wavelength goes down. And vice versa, if we can see that if we move from gamma rays to radio waves, then we have an increase in wavelength. Now, a second characteristic that we associate with, with waves is their frequency. And frequency is defined as the number of waves that pass a certain point per second. And you can imagine that for radio waves, because there aren't many peaks in this part, because they're spread out, the number of peaks on the number of waves that go past you in a second will be much smaller than that for gamma rays. So we say as we move from radio waves up to gamma rays, then the frequency increases. The final thing you'll have learned at GCSE is that all waves carry energy, um, and electromagnetic waves are no different. Um, and, you'll have, and you'll have learned that radio waves are not dangerous, whereas gamma rays are. The reason for this is because radio waves have a very low energy, whereas gamma rays have a very high energy. So we have an increase in energy as we travel from radio waves along the electromagnetic spectrum to gamma rays. So really we can link the frequency and the energy together. So if we have a high frequency of, of electromagnetic wave, then we also have a high energy. Now this is what was known for quite a long time um, and for quite a number of years. And then around about the turn of the 20th century, a scientist called Max Planck was investigating something called black body radiation. And beforehand, it was thought that, for example, a light bulb such as this one, when it gave out light, would have given out a continuous stream of continu continuous stream of light in the form of a wave. So we would imagine that, for example, this light bulb gives out yellow light, and it would just be one wave. So you just get one wave travelling from here, and it would just travel away from your light like that. However. Um, when he studied this black body radiation, he actually came up with the idea that that's not true. He came up with the idea that, that this radiation is released in little packets. So you would get a little wave given off, and then there would be a gap, and then another little one, and another little one. So rather than it being a continuous stream like this, it's, it's little tiny parts of a wave, if you like. Einstein then, a little bit later on, came up with the idea of the fact that these things are basically packets of energy so that you've got a packet of energy there a packet of energy there and a packet of energy there so the, the energy of the wave is carried in these small packets and these are the things that are called photons now Einstein went further than that because he actually linked the idea of the energy of these photons with the frequency of the wave so he said that the energy of one particular photon is proportional to the frequency of light and the constant of proportionality he called Planck's constant. So in this particular case, um, we have the energy, which is the energy of one photon, which is measured in joules. So the energy is measured in joules. Um, we've got the frequency of light, and frequency, as we know, is measured in hertz. And then we've got this Planck's constant. Now, Planck's constant is just a number, but it's a very small number. Planck's constant is actually 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus 34, and it, the unit of Planck's constant is joule seconds. So really, if we know the frequency of the light, we know Planck's constant because it's just this number, we can work out the energy of one photon, of one very s of the smallest particle of light um, for that particular frequency. So let's do a little example. Um, I would, we want to know what the energy of one photon um, of yellow light is. And yellow light's got a frequency of approximately this. So 
what we do is we set it out in exactly the same way that you always set out a calculation. The very first thing we do is we write down the equation we're going to use, and then we simply put the numbers in. So E is the thing we're trying to find. H is Planck's constant, which we wrote down before, so 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds, and then we times it by the frequency. Now, the frequency of yellow light is given by this thing here, so that's simply 5.2 times 10 to the power 14 hertz. And if we do that on our calculator, then we end up with an answer of 3.4 times 10 to the power 19 joules. And as you can expect, the energy of one very, very small part of light is very, very small. Now that's fine if we know the frequency of the light, we can work out the energy of one photon. Sometimes though we're not given the frequency of the light, sometimes we've, we're given the wavelength of the light. Now, so what we could do is we could use this equation here that again we met at GCSE. So if we know the wavelength of, of the actual light, then we could work out the frequency of the light because we know how fast light travels. And light always travels at the same speed in a vacuum, which is three times 10 to the eight meters per second. So if we're given a question where we're given the wavelength of light, what we could do is we could calculate the frequency um, because we know the speed of light and the wavelength, and then we could take the frequency and we could plug it into this equation here and work out the energy. Now that's two steps, and often we don't like doing two steps. We'd prefer just to do one. So what we can do is we basically we can put these two equations together to derive a second equation. So if we start off with our two equations, we've got this equation linking the energy and the frequency together and we've also got this equation that will link the wave speed and the frequency and the wavelength of our wave together. Now we can take this and we can rearrange it. So we can rearrange this so that the frequency is equal to the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So I know what the frequency is in terms of the speed of light and the wavelength. So I could take this and I could substitute this into this equation and that will give me an equation that, that links the energy and the wavelength and the way I do it is this so I write I start off with my first equation E equals H times the frequency well the frequency is equal to this so I can write this as so I write the frequency as oops, lambda like that so E equals H times C over lambda and if we tidy this up a little bit we get this equation equals C H C over lambda like that. So let's write it out in full. So the energy of one particular photon is equal to Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So now we've got one equation that links the energy of one photon with the wavelength of the actual wave itself. So let's do one more example. Here's the equation that we've just derived. I want to calculate the energy of a photon of light when it's got a wavelength of this. Okay, so this is the final thing we need to do. So we, again, as always, write down the equation that we're going to use, hc over lambda. Okay, and now we put our numbers in. The energy equals h. Now Planck's constant is 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus 34 times by c. c is the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the power 8. And then we divide it by the wavelength, and the wavelength is this number here. So the wavelength is 3.9 times 10 to the power of 9. And again, we need to get our calculator out, but when we do, then we end up with an answer of 5.1 5.1 times 10 to the power of minus 17 joules. Like that. So, in this video, we've recapped the electromagnetic spectrum. We've introduced the idea of a photon, which is, a, which is the smallest part of a wave of light. Um, and then we've shown that you can work out the energy of one particular photon, provided that you know the frequency of the light or you know the wavelength of the light. So thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.